Myself, my husband, and our daughter. A lady who is my husband's niece, who had joined us in Akure with the hope of traveling with us to Lagos. The driver, accountant, maintained a normal speed. He drove professionally. That gave me a lot of comfort, and I felt I could find some time to sleep a bit. My daughter was next to me. She was just nine, nine years old. She was coming to Nigeria for me, with me for the second time. Shortly after Ijare, Ijare Junction, the driver felt the wagon's tires rupture and decided to park the car with the hope of changing the tires. It was like a film in a juicy, motley crowd of armed men in military uniform came out of the bush. They fired at the boot of the car. Ahead of us, five of them came out of the bush. Another two came from the rear. My daughter screamed, Mommy, Daddy, what's going on? There was no time to say a word. They marched us through into the bush, firing into the sky. They hit me on my chest, hit my daughter on her head. Blood oozed. At this time, it was better to kill me. I shouted at one of the armed men. His response was hell. He went straight for my private part. Tore my dress with his gun. The others ripped my dresses. I was left with my undies. My husband and my daughter started crying. Two of them dug their teeth into my breast. While attending a secondary school in Adamawa, I had lived with some Fulani, so I understood a few Fulani words. I started bleeding, at least for my daughter. To my shock, at gunpoint, they removed the dress of my little girl. <laughs> One of them carried her on his head as a baby, on his head as my baby struggled, shouting, Daddy, Mommy, what's going on? Help me! <sighs> I could not help myself. We marched for nine hours. I was half naked. My daughter was totally naked. <laughs> her tears was like a, blood, a stream of blood on her cheeks. Our phones had been seized. We ended up in an ungoverned region in the thick of the forest. We met a well-organized group. There were some kidnapped victims. I saw two women, two ladies and three men. They were, there were some people with their legs chained to, to trees. They were as if half dead we were separated i was separated from my husband my daughter was taken away i only heard her screaming intermittently i did not know what they were doing to her these men now about two dozen had a full kitchen they had a huge camp and a traditional medical team how can they say they don't know where these people are how can they say that? <laughs> but the camps appeared isolated from each other. We had noises afar indicating it might be nuclear settlements of camps. Right in my presence, I saw them pack the remains of a woman. They took her and buried her a few meters away from us. She had tribal marks. I cannot describe the agony of, of six days in captivity in this little piece i cannot talk about how they asked my husband to choose between being myself being raped or his daughter being raped my husband broke down in uncontrollable tears one of them hit him saying yoruba bastard you they cry idiot they now give him an op they gave him an option that he should be raped by one homosexual among them my husband, a devout Muslim. My husband is a devout Muslim. He told them that homosexual and rape, homosexual and rape of any kind was against Islam. They hit him with the butt of AK-47. What do you know about Islam? You can imagine 
you are being asked to choose between being raped by a homosexual, your daughter just nine years old, or your wife being raped. They gave the fourth option. If you fail to choose one, we will rape your daughter, rape you the man, and rape me, the wife. I myself, the sacrificial, I made myself the sacrificial lamb. My husband begged, <laughs> saying they should name any price. One of them asked him to bend down. Three beastly criminals sat on his back, jumping until he was too weak to stand. I was not allowed to put on any additional clothes. Imagine they, they rape you all night and they stop you from putting on any clothes for 24 hours. The rain fell, the rain fell once. I became a relic at a sexual museum for the army who in turn addressed me and asked questions about my financial standing. New Fulani men joined the camp. They organized military training for the New Fulani men that came.